Yo, Kepe Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm bringing you the full, the full review of the Elite Screens Cinewhite A8K Acoustically Transparent Screen. If you guys missed my last video, I did the unboxing and the build process of this screen. And Elite Screens did send this out to me for review. And the first thing we want to do is just put it together and show you how easy it was to do, which was incredibly simple and straightforward. But now we want to make sure that this thing actually performs. This is almost just under a $900 screen here, so it's very expensive. So we want to make sure that it does what it claims. And there's a lot that it says that it does. So the big point of having one of these is that it is acoustically transparent. So that's going to be one of our tests today. I have it on the floor because I have three speakers behind it, my center channel and my front left and right speaker, as well as my subwoofer. They're behind this screen. And we're going to do a test today where I use an SPL meter and I'm going to play a white noise or a pink noise, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to read out about 80 decibels. That's the goal, around 80 decibels. And I'm going to put the screen in front of it and see if I stay around that same 80 decibel range. The point of doing that is to make sure that there's not a lot of loss of sound through this screen. Is it really acoustically transparent? We're going to find out how good it is at being transparent. That's one of the tests. And once we do that, we're going to hang it up here and take a look at the picture quality and all that good stuff, because I haven't yet seen it for myself, so we're going to see that together. Now, let me give you guys a little bit of specs on this screen. I have a cheat sheet here. So this is the Aeon Cinewhite A8K series. This one costs $894. And they come in several different sizes. This one is a 103 inch screen. You can also get it in 123, 135, or 150 inches. And as of right now, it's only the six by nine aspect ratio. So if you want a 235 or whatever, you don't have it just yet. But hopefully they make some, this is brand new to their lineup. Now this is also 4K, 8K ready. So if you are somebody who likes to keep up with the technology and you want to get 4K projectors or 8K when they come out, then uh, yeah, this screen is ready for it. I think this is also um, short throw ready too. So if you want a short throw projector right in front of the screen, it's able to handle that. And it is ambient light rejecting, which I think is really, really cool because if you have a, a lit room or a lot of lights that are usually on, a lamp or something like that, this will help kind of block some of that light so it's easier to see in a daytime or a lit room. So let's get right on with the test. I'm gonna use my phone as an SPL meter, nothing super scientific. This will do just fine for me as to just show me how much volume I'm hearing with the pink noise, right? We're gonna put it in my listening position and then play that pink noise and see what we read out. And then I'm gonna put the screen back in front of it and see what changes, if anything at all. You guys will be able to see this on your side too. I will pop up the image on the screen for you guys so we can see what's going on. So let's get right into the first test. All right, so we have my phone here and this is gonna be where I'm gonna put it, just behind where my head would be, pointed that way towards the screen. And then behind the screen here, are four different speakers, my center left, right, and the subwoofer is right there. So we're gonna come over to the Anthem B processor and I have my test noise ready to go. We're gonna turn that on. And let's take a look and see what we're reading. Go ahead and turn that off. So it looks like we're reading kind of between 78 to 81 decibels, right? So we're gonna leave that here. And that's what I wanted to see. Where were we at with the screens? 78 to 81 decibels. I'm gonna move the screen out of the way now and we're gonna see if I stay in that same range. And then we'll put the screen back one more time and, and see if there's any difference. All right, screen is out of the way. Let's go ahead. Remember 78 to 81. Let's go ahead and turn it on again. Same volume as last time. All right. turn that off. All right.
right, well there you go. There's the sound test with the pink noise. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And you, as you guys could see, we really stayed in that same range. We didn't really drop below 78 at all on either with the screen in front of it or without it. And we didn't too much raise up. I think I saw an 82 at one point with the screen up there. I didn't see it at all with the screen away, but that's, in, that's impressive. I like the fact that there's really zero audible loss of sound with this screen. Now you guys may be wondering, well, does it muffle kind of like the high end or anything like that? Well, probably not because the pink noise plays all frequencies top to bottom within a frequency spectrum. And we didn't see any kind of drop in the volume at all. And so I'm very impressed with that. And, and I, for good reason, because if you're spending this much money, it needs to do what it says. So A++ on the acoustic transparent look to it. I really like that. So now I'm gonna move this projector screen that I had, that's my previous one. I'm gonna move that one out the way and put this one on the wall and we'll take a look at how the picture quality looks. All right, here we are, I have the screen on the wall and I left the um, the balance beam, basically the balance bar up to make sure that I was straight. Now you guys can see at the bottom here, I can't fill in this spot and it's not the screen's fault. It's not my projector's fault or where I have it positioned. It's the layout of my room. My room slightly has a tilt to it. And so it's really hard to make up for that. So that's as much of the screen as I can fill. We, again, 103 inches. That bottom part doesn't bother me because the same problem was with the other projector screen. When I watch a movie and it's in wide, uh, widescreen it's not really a problem at all so i've learned to deal with it but here is the screen and you as you guys can see it's the middle of the day but it's a cloudy day so a little bit of light there is a window behind me as well and it's kind of blocked by the curtains but not too much but you can see it perfectly this is super easy to see and then i have a 4k video actually the video is 8k but of course i'm shooting in 4k and my projector is a 4k projector but you guys are getting an idea of kind of like colors and blacks against bright colors and you guys can see how the white screen is doing. Now I've done a comparison between a gray screen and a white screen before, but let me know if you're interested in me doing another test with that. Cause I do have my screen sitting over there, a gray screen, and then this is the new 8K transparent screen. So let me know if you guys want me to do another comparison between uh, a gray screen and a white screen in day and nighttime. I'm more than happy to do that for you. But as you guys can see, I mean, we expect it to look good and it definitely does. I'm gonna turn on the uh, ceiling uh, fan, turn on the light so you guys can see what it looks like with some ceiling light on and all my lights are really bright i put different bulbs in there because i definitely need it for youtube so your your lights aren't going to be this color or this bright but you guys can still see an image fairly well of course as as nature is um it's pretty uh washed out naturally uh, but you guys can still watch it now it looks a little more faded to you guys than it does me if i lower down the iso a little bit you guys can kind of see a little bit better there you go so you can still make out an image on it. It's not bad at all. So not too bad. It does really good in uh, the light, you, as you guys can see. Pretty good at rejecting most light at all. But of course, it does look a little bit washed out. But that's not the screen's fault. It's the projector fault. It would be a little bit easier to see if the screen was black or, or if it was gray because the dark colors or the black colors would come out a little bit better. But other than that, not bad. we got an ad going on here. But with that being said, guys, I really like this screen. You guys can see it's really easy to set up if you watch the unboxing and it's really minimalistic. Um, and then and it doesn't block any sound. So if you put on using this as it intended with your speakers behind the screen, you'll have no problem with that. Let me skip this ad so we can see something worth seeing. There we go. So it's a really nice screen. It, 900 bucks from uh, Elite Screens for the 103 inch screen. Again, there's four other sizes, I believe. Um, and it's a really nice, high quality screen. I absolutely love it. Thank you again so much to Elite Screens for sending us out. If there's any more tests you guys want me to do while I still have two screens, please let me know because I will try. I'm not going to hold on to that one. I'll get rid of it in some sort of way. That one's a 100 inch screen. So I may have to figure out how to break it down and give it to somebody. I do have an LED kit on the back. Elite Screens does offer LED kits for their screens i may get one of those because i i didn't want to take this off and try to stick it to the new screen so i'm probably going to order another one at least screen if you're watching i need a i need a, a little screen here a little led thing but anyway let me guys let me know what you guys think about the screen down below is it worth the money what do you guys think i think it is a really nice screen i think it'll last you for a while the material is really, really nice and of course it gives you a really nice picture let me know what you guys think down below hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already we will see you guys in the next video KPS guy out. Peace.